Welcome back, everyone. This is Thomas Triple T time with another New Bullish Crypto Analysis. Before we dig in and take a look at the macro news that may um, help help us indicate what's going to happen the um, in the market, remember this is for entertainment only and not to be considered as financial advice. And uh, I would appreciate it if you could help spread my pretty easy to understand analysis out into the world to help uh, others, especially newbies or people who are, aren't into analyzing the market, uh, to help them make more informed decisions. And you can do that by smashing the like, ringing my bell, or hitting subscribe, and then leaving comments or questions in the uh, comment section. That not only helps you get notified, uh, but it helps the uh, YouTube algorithm spread the um, analysis out to others. So with that, let's dive into uh, the analysis. We'll start off with this article from um, Market Watch, and it's um it's an article about um, a Bank of America analysis um, analyst. I mean, uh, where they they a- analyzed 19 bear markets in the last uh, 140 years, and um, they're predicting based on that data where the market will end. And before we dive into this news article, I, I want to share with you that you know i do these kind of analysis as well but i can tell you one thing it's it's a good like it's an and it is something to be mindful about like you know you can take it with a grain of salt or like like these kind of predictions because they're predicting based on past behaviors or past actions it doesn't always line up and it's a good gauge but i wouldn't take it to the bank uh, so remember that so what is a bear market our bear market is defined as uh, when the market uh, or security is down 20 percent from um, from a recent high and if you look at the s p 500 uh, it's it's off 13.5 percent from january uh, january high uh, of 4796 and then um it's in the correction territory, obviously. Ten uh, percent drop from a recent. Uh, let's see, just means uh, correction territory often defined as ten percent of the drop. So correction is ten percent drop. The Nasdaq is um, twenty three percent from the November 20, uh, 2021 high. So based on their analysis of one hundred and forty years, um, they said that the average decline was thirty seven point three. Three percent, and the uh, average duration is two hundred eighty-nine days. So they, based on those data, they predicted that will be the end of the bear market will be roughly around, I believe, October. Let me see here. Where is that? I thought I just found it here. I'm pretty sure it's October. Yeah, <laughs> it's right here. Um, while the past performance is no guide for future performance, Harnett and teams at the current bear market would end October 19th on this year. You know, um, use that as a gauge, like a very rough gauge. I don't think so. Um, I don't think it'll be on that day. Because the macro environment is so volatile and there's so many moving parts and that, um, I mean, you know, I would say, gosh, uh, yeah, that's, it's tough. It's tough to, to nail it um, to like even a month, in my opinion. But anyways, use that as a gauge. Just lots of um, headwind and uh, volatility from various macro environment factors. This uh, news article is from CNBC, and it's titled, We Are Nowhere Near the Bottom. <laughs> it's funny how they lined up. Uh, that was not intentional. Uh, top economist says global markets creator, as global markets creator. And um, it's nothing new. I just want to continue to give you different perspectives. Uh, it says now is the time for reappreciation of the economic fun- fundamentals around the world in terms of growth. 
Brunello Rosa um, told CNBC News. It's hard for markets to be totally optimistic when inflation is going up, growth is going down, and interest rates are rising fast across the globe. So, again, nothing new, but um, they're a pretty prominent um, company. So, Also, according to CNBC News, this, I like CNBC News because they share s- uh, some of the same, if not uh, similar, news articles, and there's no giant paywall. Like every l- news company want a paywall, and you have to, if you pay for like, you know, ten, twenty of them, that's a lot of money for month per month. And so, um, I like CNBC. Uh, this article titled "Tech Companies Racked Up Over Seventeen Billion Dollars in Losses on Equity Investments." In the first quarter, these losses are not losses from their their decline in their stock prices, and um, these losses are from them investing in other companies. So, seventeen billions is a lot. <laughs> the uh, technology market's first quarter plunge uh, produced all sorts of red ink for tech companies that double as investors. Basically, what I said. Um, so, you got Amazon, Uber. Alphabet, Shopify, uh, each posted billion dollar plus losses on equity investments in the period. So, a shareholder lawsuit is um, is um, starting. Uh, they're suing Musk, uh, with some, uh, potential takeover of Twitter for forty four bill uh, of, with the offer price of forty four billion dollars, and the reason they're citing that is. I'm going to magnify it up for you so you can see. In a proposed class action lawsuit, and this is according to Reuters, uh, in the the proposed class action uh, lawsuit filed in Delaware Chancery Court, the Orlando Police Pension Fund said Delaware law forbade a quick merger because Musk had agreements with other big Twitter shareholders, including his finan- uh, financial advisor Morgan Stanley, and Twitter founder Jack Dorsey to support the buyout. The uh, they said the uh, f- Musk, who owns 9.6 percent of Twitter, the effective owner of more than 15 um, percent of the company's ser- shares, uh, it said that the uh, required delay in the merger by three years unless. Uh, Two thirds of the shares not owned by him granted approval. So, I mean, they have a point. So we'll see how this pan, uh, pan out. This could um, be a, a little obstacle in Elon's progress towards um, taking over Twitter. Um, this article from uh, Investors Business Daily: uh, Why the Fed Rally Failed, uh, the Dow. Jones has a catch-22 problem. Let me magnify this up for you. Uh, basically, you, um, if you've been following my new, uh, my news, uh, you know we got the pump after uh, Jerome Powell mentioned that 50, 75 basis point is off the table. I shared on my Twitter about that. <laughs> What's interesting about that is like the market reacted right at that moment when he said, you know, seventy-five basis point is off the table. But I think what the market realized later on after they got some sleep the next, you know, the next day is that you can take 75 basis point off the table and implement three 50 uh, basis point. So you get that's 100, um, 150. So that's a uh, basis point or 1.5 percent. Right. So that's equivalent to two 75 basis point. I think that's I think that's what happened. They realized, wait a minute. You know, they can still implement multiple 50 basis point increases. <laughs> so that's, anyways, um, if you're not following me on Twitter, please follow me on there. Sometimes I tweet short stuff. <laughs> and uh, I also tweet uh, the um, the tweet chains on these new stuff too. So follow me on there, Thomas T, as in Thomas, dot, uh, Thomas T. Ty, uh, with the at sign in front. Anyway, so um, their simple explanation is that for the stock market uh, overnight U-turn is that the Dow Jones uh, has what might describe as a catch-22 problem. And um, and then uh, basically, uh, blah, 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 blah. See, here's the, uh, the Dow's predicament is that the Federal Reserve uh, has to time policies so far and so fast 
that it risks triggering a recession. The way out is less hawkish fetish, <laughs> not fetish, <laughs> Fed. The way out is a less hawkish Fed, and Powell seemed to deliver, deliver that on Wednesday, fueling a rally. Okay, we got that part. All it took uh, for, was for Powell to take um, the possibility of 75 basis point rate, rate hike off the table, at least for the uh, June meeting. Okay, we got that. For uh, if a somewhat less hawkish Fed can still adequately tame inflation, the Dow Jones is set for a rally. Okay. Yet, as Powell ha has explained recently, monetary policy reaches the real economy by changing financial conditions, such as um, by changing finan financial conditions such as market-based rate, uh, interest rates, and stock prices. In other words, seriously tightening policy and doing it expeditiously, as Powell has said, is needed. Most implicitly requires lowering stock prices. So, this might be kind of hard to understand. Uh, but what he, there's, he says, if you're tightening policy, right, you can raise interest rates, right? That's one way to do it. And tightening policy, like getting uh, what they're calling quantitative tightening, QT for short, is that they're going to uh, shrink their balance sheet, get rid of you know, the stuff they have on there. And that has essentially the same impact. So, uh, and that's going to require the stock price to go lower. And that uh, potentially, that's when people, the investors realize, wait a minute, if they're going to go uh, hard on quantitative tightening, then it's going to hurt the stock market. And so that's why it could be a contributing factor as well. Payroll growth excel, uh, accelerated by 428,000 in uh, April, more than expected as job pictures stay strong. So um, that's that's very bullish news for the economy. However, <laughs> and this I, I want to give credit to CNBC here. So what this is saying is that non-farm payroll grew by 428,000 in April, a bit above the Dow Jones estimate of 400, so ex uh, exceeded expectation. And um, so this means that non-farm payrolls are payroll accounts and that obviously it's non-farm, not farm related jobs. So that's just like, you know, pretty much everything else like retail, business uh, type payroll, small, medium sized uh, businesses or large businesses that are not farm related. So payroll are those um, accounts or people working, if you will people that are working. So that means that it increased. Jobs increase in, in short, simple terms. So jobs increase, that's good. But if this good news, this is good news, why did the market uh, pretty much tank today? It continues to slide today overall, except for energy and utilities. Why? Well, the reason is because if jobs are growing, right? Jobs are growing, that gives the Fed more incentive to be more aggressive and if they're more aggressive that's going to tame the stock market slow down the economy therefore that's why the market tanked it's like it's like you're damn if you do it and you're damn if you don't so it's like a a, a a balance in between so that's why the stock market reacted today the way it did continuing the slide the other uh, good news is that unemployment rate held 3.6% uh, after being expected to nudge to 3. Point, uh, n uh, not to nudge uh, lower to 3.5. 3.6, 3 3.5, that's still incredible unemployment rate. So, um, so the, the economy overall is actually doing really well. I know inflation makes it look horrible, but uh, and in inflation is horrible. But the U.S. economy is better off than most other major economies around the world. So um, credit to uh, the Biden administration where it's due. Well, but they struggle in other areas. <laughs> they need to get inflation down. Elon Musk will fund his Twitter deal with money from countries that suppress free speech. I tweeted about this this, this morning. Um, as you know, Elon... Um, recently announced that he is um, very much a proponent of free speech and uh, yet at the same time he took money from two countries 
uh, in this per, uh, particular article, they talked about uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Qu- uh, Qu- Qu- Qatar, Qatar, sorry. <laughs> so Saudi Arabia and Qatar, two countries that are a bit extreme in uh, suppressing free uh, speech uh, by jailing people and uh, at times um, making them disappear into body parts and pieces. So, interesting dynamic here, huh? Hmm. We'll see what happens. Wall Street ends, uh, this one's from investing.com. Wall Street ends um, week on down note after job report. Well, I covered this already. I'm not going to cover it again. What is this? Uh, Same thing. Already covered it. Russia hires war mobilization specialists after denying it will declare war. I don't know why people and the media keep taking Russia for their words. They're, they're, they lie. They lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. And so, they're, you know, they said they weren't invading Ukraine when they mount... Um, hundreds of thousands of troops at the border saying that they're just pra- practicing mili- military drills and then they invaded and um, they they keep saying one thing and doing something else so just do not believe any of these things that the russians are saying this article talks about uh, how they looked at job postings and they saw um job postings from um from russia um looking for specialists in certain areas and these positions basically show that they're uh, they're building up for uh, an invasion um, well they're invading already but a formal invasion what the hell ever that means uh, according to US news uh, Putin to send doom, uh, doomsday warning to uh, west as at Russia's World War II victory parade what's interesting about Russia's victory parade uh, their parade is um i believe it's uh, what is that what, what day is that this oh man it's coming up it's like uh dang it i think it's like next week or something anyways i forgot the date like april the 10th or something like that don't quote me on that anyways the um their victory parade is basically to celebrate the uh russia's defeat of the nazis in world war ii when the nazis you know thought they uh, could cross winterland into russia and uh, (laughs) and defeat russia obviously they were wrong and um so what's ironic about russia's uh celebration this particular year is that they're acting very much like the nazis they invaded another country they are rounding up people and putting them into areas where they control they are killing and raping women and children and um yeah so oh you know it's curious curious how they're celebrating and they're like continuously saying that they're um they're fighting the nazis while they act like nazis and the people they fight are innocent people Hmm. anyways they're probably gonna flex some like you know military uh, planes and nukes and tanks and all that while making very little progress in Ukraine, except for killing, murdering, and raping uh, women and children and innocent civilians. I highly doubt they're going to display that, though, and then burying people in mass graves. Uh, Okay, CNBC News, longtime China bull Stephen Roach says there's no way Beijing will meet its 5.5 GDP uh, growth target, and I concur. I don't think I don't I don't see a way for them to do it uh, with their current COVID uh, zero COVID lockdown policies. Don't see them doing it. Um, so, yeah, I uh, 
he mentioned that um, they'll be lucky if they make it to four. <laughs> I think they'll they'll land at three point something, in my opinion. Uh, so, why is this important? Well, because China is um, is a uh, is is a major part, the second largest economy in the world, and um, what happens in China will impact the rest of the world. Uh, unlike in two thousand eight, when we the U.S. had its um, meltdown, the financial market meltdown, uh, China economy back then was running at about eight percent GDP, and so they were able to kind of anchor the uh, the rest of the world, uh, but n- not this time. So not th- I think this time, most of the major world economies will be struggling with inflation and there is no one strong anchor to hold the rest up. So that's why I don't think the bottom is in any time soon. Um, there are rippling effects that's going to continue through the rest of 2022 and then ripple right into 2023 where we see long-term impacts such as housing and rent uh, rent and um, and stuff like that. Uh, will ripple through. I believe this um, this gentleman was on Squawk Box Asia. Also from CNBC, man, I, I unknowingly have a lot of CNBC news articles. Um, this article from um, CNBC says uh, we see a big recession in the making. It's top CEO. CEOs are fearing the worst in Europe. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. I concur. <laughs> That's why we cover Europe almost every day. So this uh, summary here, key points. The uh, euro zone face, uh, faces concurrent economic shock from the war in Ukraine and surge in food and energy prices exas- exas- exacerbate. There are certain words that I just fumble over. Exasperate. No, that's not it. Exacerbate. There we go. Exacerbate. (laughs) Did you know that English is my second language? Uh, By the conflict, along with supply shock from China, zero COVID policy, all the stuff that I talk about almost daily. So, um, uh, Stefan Hartung, CEO of German engineering and technology giant Bosch, uh, told CNBC that the company sees big recession in the making. No surprise there. Just showing you a wider perspective out there. Ooh, this is uh, Germany who previously, recently, pre- previously said that they wouldn't be sending heavy armament to uh, Ukraine. As you know, weeks ago, they changed their tune. They uh, are now sending, in addition, um, in addition to what they've already sent, there's, um, they're now sending seven howitzers to Ukraine in further policy reversal. And I'm trying to show you what these howitzers are. These guys, these things. So, um, pretty cool stuff. Yeah. We need everybody to stick together and uh, defeat this evil Russian dictator. If you think your country's inflation, if you're except unless you're in one of these other countries that have really high inflation, like U.S. eight point five, but remember, whatever the CPI says, multiply by that by roughly about two and a half to three, and then you get the real one. So, Turkey's inflation hits two decade high of seventy percent. Seventy percent. By the way, Turkey is one of the uh, countries that are very crypto friendly so hopefully some of them are able to hedge towards crypto and uh, and uh, fight some of the inflation it, i know crypto is tanking but <laughs> at least it's not by 70 percent you know um i mean on uh, some cryptos are anyways uh they're they're having a hard time over there and that's it for the news that may impact the uh, world markets. I appreciate your time. Please help my uh, easy-to-understand analysis to others so they can make more informed decisions by clicking on the like and ringing my bell so you can get notifications. 
and then hitting subscribe if you haven't and sharing your thoughts and questions in the comments section in the uh, YouTube or on Twitter. Peace. I'll see you in the uh, Bitcoin video coming up.